you will need to measure your finger and check the size. For this you can use the simple sizer like this white stripe. This one has UK sizing on, but there are also US sizes available. You can also double check the size with this sizer and see which ring fits your finger comfortably. You shouldn't have any issues taking it off. For me it will be size M. I'm going to use a sterling silver wide rectangular wire. I'm using a ruler to mark the length. I know that my size will require 56 mm of this wire. There are conversions and calculators available online to determine the length of the ring blank. I will link one good source in the description box below. After checking the length, I will simply mark the metal with the pencil. It doesn't have to be permanent, as I will be cutting it immediately. I'm going to cut it with the jeweler's saw. First, lubricate the blade with the beeswax and then proceed to cut the straight line. It's most comfortable when your bench peg is at the level of your chest. When cutting, make sure you hold the saw frame vertically, don't push or pull too hard and don't lean forward. Let the blade do its job. All you need to do is to guide the blade and make sure your hand is steady. Focus on the strokes downwards because that's when the cutting happens. Now it's time to clean the edges and make sure they are even. For filing, you can use a big hand file. This one is cut to grade. It will remove the silver quite quickly. For the best effect, make sure your movement is in one direction when filing. I use the bench peg to help me keep the ring blank steady and in one place when filing. Another tool that you can use for this job is a sanding stick with the low grade sanding paper attached to it. This one is 120. It also removes a lot of silver pretty fast. While filing, make sure you check the edges, that they are even. And be careful not to remove too much silver, otherwise it will affect the size of your ring, obviously. I will now anneal the ring blank, so it's easier to bend it later. Annealing is heating up the metal piece and allowing it to cool down slowly in order to reduce hardness in the metal. Alright, time to bend the ring. For this, you can use the clever ring bending tool which is attached to your bench or hand tools like this ring bending tool. Today I'm actually going to use the most basic way with the half round pliers. I know that not many of you have these other tools, so I want to show you how to bend with these pliers. It's not the easiest job <laughs> and you might need to press against the bench if, like me, you're not the strongest person. Well, what matters is that it works. You've probably noticed that at this point I'm not trying to have the round shape of the ring. I will shape it later using a ring mandrel. But for now I'm focused on closing the two edges perfectly together and having them flush. Next step will be to cut through the place where the edges meet with the saw blade, which will fix the uneven surface and help to make the closing even more flush, with the edges aligning perfectly together for soldering. I am now going to prepare flux. Flux is a solution, kind of like a paste, that you will need to apply to the place on the metal where you'll be soldering. This is required for the solder to flow. Here I am using borax cone and a little dish with a dash of water and then I am going to create a paste using this dish. I will apply this flux onto the metal using a little brush. I am going to cover the ring with the flux. I am now placing this ring blank <laughs> or ring on my charcoal block on the soldering board for soldering. I usually apply the solder, and in this case I'm going to use hard solder, with the solder pick. So I will place the solder on the soldering board 
and then I will pick it with the solder pick and apply it onto the place where I will be soldering a little bit better. But you could also attach the solder directly while it's still in original form, directly on the place where you'll be soldering and then just make sure that it doesn't jump off. You just need to make sure that it stays in one place for it to flow. When heating up the metal, make sure that you heat it up evenly and that the ring is bring up to nice high temperature, but make sure that you don't overheat it. As soon as the solder has flown, make sure you turn off the flame because now there's no need for you to keep heating up the metal. And now you can quench it and then it's time to put it in the pickle. The pickling solution I'm using is a food grade pickling solution that I bought at Cook on gold you can find it also on amazon i know there are more toxic solutions available but this one is what i'm using at the moment and it works very well after pickling i'm going to quench it again to clean it from the pickling solution and then wipe it off clean okay now our ring has been soldered as you can see it looks pretty good i am very happy with the edges they are flush and there are no gaps so the next step will be to shape the ring. I'm taking my mandrel, which has the sizes on it, and I'm going to push the ring onto the mandrel. And obviously it doesn't look very good right now, but don't worry, in no time I'm going to shape it into the ring. So as you can see, here I am hammering and I just make sure to move it around so I'm not focusing on just one place. I am changing the direction and I am moving the ring around the mandrel and I am also not hitting it too hard. It's better for it to take a little bit longer rather than use too much force. You can place your ring mandrel against the bench peg so you have some extra support. Oh, and make sure you change the ring on the mandrel so take it off and change the side and put it back on so each side is hammered evenly and for hammering i'm using a rawhide mallet which won't leave any marks on the metal and that's how it looks like now i really like the white effect but i'm going to hammer it a little bit more because i've realized it's not perfectly even just yet here, as you can see, I've placed the mandrel on my lap, so it's easier to hold it and control it. Honestly, you just do it the way is most comfortable for you. And if your ring gets stuck, don't worry, you can just push it off with, uh, with the mallet. And there we go, <laughs> it's almost ready. And now it's time to sand and clean the ring. For that you can use buffing and sanding sticks again or I personally will be using rotary tool or pendant motor. It's just so much faster and much more comfortable. There are different bits and attachments for this tool so it's just quick and easy to do it. But if you don't have access to rotary tool pendant motor you will be absolutely fine using different sanding sticks and buffing sticks. Just make sure you start with most coarse ones and move your way up to the finest ones. The flat ones are great to use on the outside of the ring and to clean the inside of the ring there are also shapes like half round shapes which I'm using here so as you can see this is a great solution make sure you remove all the solder that's left on the outside of the ring and also inside so you won't be able to see it that's very important to make sure that all is perfectly clean you can also use simple sanding papers, uh, wet and dry papers, they are also cold. Just take a little piece, start with the lower grades, move your way up to the finest grades and that should also work very very well. It's the simplest, cheapest solution. Of course you're gonna have to work a bit more 
<laughs> to achieve your effect but yeah it's not impossible but now i am going to finish the ring using rotary tool and for that make sure that you're using protective equipment like mask and goggles you have to cover your face properly first i'm using 3m yellow bristle little attachment just to see how the ring looks like. Just wanted to give it like this initial cleaning before I proceed to all other attachments. I wanted to see where are little damages. Now I can see all of the marks clearly. I know exactly what I need to do. So I decided to start with white attachment, which is most abrasive one. And this one is excellent to remove all of the marks, all of the scratches and just completely sand and prepare the surface for next steps. This size is perfect to clean in the inside of the ring. Then I've changed it to a black color and that's a next grade and I'm smoothing out the surface inside of the ring. After that, I've noticed that I do have a little bit of fire scale or fire stain and I'm going to have to remove it. Unfortunately, there's extra work, but it has to be done. So I've taken this attachment and I'm going through the ring now. It gets hot really fast now. So as you can see, I've put on these little finger protectors, which are great. I mean, I can still feel the hot metal, but at least I'm not burning my fingers. So I'm going through uh, the ring with this attachment and I'm removing quite a lot of silver, but not too much. When removing silver inside of the ring, also make sure you're not removed too much so it doesn't affect the size of your ring. After this is done and I can see that all of the stain has been removed and I am happy with the effect, I am actually going to go and pick the white one again. And as you can see, I am smoothing out the surface and making sure that there are absolutely no marks, no scratches, nothing. This one is one of my favorite attachments, honestly. And if there was any stain left, this one will help me to remove the, the, the rest of it. I swapped to the black one now. And now I'm going with the yellow 3M bristle attachment outside and inside. So inside I'm going to use all of these bristles, the rest of it the red one, blue one, pink and green one. But outside, I'm actually going to use this little attachment, which will allow me to achieve this satin effect, which I personally really, really love. so curious to know what you think about it. I personally really really like it. You can make the edges a little bit sharper but I wanted them to be more round just like that so I didn't pay too much attention when I was working around the edges because it didn't matter to me. I was happy to have them a little bit more round but yeah I just really like the effect and the look of this ring, Jarek really likes it too, so I am definitely going to make another one for him. I would personally say that it actually looks even better on the man's hand. <laughs> But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think, if you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this one, 
and thank you so much for tuning in today i i had a lot of fun making this video i don't know if you've noticed but i actually started filming when it was still bright outside and i finished when the sand sun not sand <laughs> sun went down so yeah um thank you so much for watching today and i will see you in the next one bye